with its roots in the uprising of November 1830 and encouraged by events elsewhere in Europe, including the success of the Italian independence movement and take advantage of a Russia weakened by the Crimean War and the reforms introduced by Tsar Alexander II, the uprising of January 1863 was the longest lasting in post-partition Poland. Although it was ultimately unsuccessful and Russian reprisals were swift and ruthless, its engagement of all levels of society went on to have a decisive influence on the subsequent development of Polish society. This is the story of that uprising. I, t towards the end of 1863, mm -hmm. the, militarily, uh, the uprising received a bit of a boost when um, um, Tragut uh, returned, and, and who had a actually served in the Tsarist army as, as an officer. Tragut, and he, I think, he resigned in 1862. But he was, he sort of. Arrived, uh, I think, in the autumn of 1863 to sort of take charge of, of, of the of the whole of the whole effort. Yes, but. And uh, he, he was this kind of the person who knew what to what to do. I mean, uh, uh, he wouldn't got into you know uh, too much detail. But uh, first, before that happens in in August, you've got this famous battle of it's unpronounceable for uh, for Englishmen the battle of Zizhen. Vision, yes, Vision. unpronounceable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you travel from Warsaw to Lublin, you've got um, you've got Vision um, to the uh, to the right. Um, it's 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 it's, it's um, closer to Lublin than to Warsaw, but uh, it's not that you have to um, seek uh, very very long. I mean, it's the, the main road that leads from Warsaw to Lublin, you've got Vision on the right, and there is a monument to that battle. And what happened? There was a Russian convoy uh, having 200,000 rubles in, okay. in gold, and the Polish uh, fighters attacked that and, and, did, uh, and, and, took, they, and, and took the money. And they, but this was a, a planned operation. They knew a planned, that, a planned. They knew, they, they knew. They knew there would be 200,000 rubles up for grabs. If yeah, they because they, 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 they knew, because they, 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 they worst, the, um, the January uprising, I mean, we have to remember that it, I mean, we, we are talking about a secret Polish state. With its own, you know, tax system, uh, with its own um, uh, seals, uh, with its own um, intelligence, and they learned that there is a, a convoy that is to um, that is to travel from Warsaw to Lublin, carrying this amount of money, two hundred thousand uh, rubles in gold, and. Um, Funny thing, because after the after the battle, the the the, the, the commander, the uh, colonel Heidenreich, Heidenreich, general, uh, German name, Heidenreich Kruk, that was his, uh, let's say, uh, nom de guerre, uh, his pseudonym, um, uh, would give a, a rubble to every Russian, and <laughs> after that, the Russians were talking that Polish uh, insurgents are so good and so nice <laughs> that they give money even to Russians. It was a very, very good operation. And they, and they, 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 they bought a number of rifles. Uh, they, they bought ammo for that, for that money. So that was, that was the first spark um, that uh, helped the, the uprising um, uh, um, uh, survive. But of course, you are right in saying that uh, Traugut was a very, very talented commander, and he became the dictator. So, um, like in the um, January uprising, I mean, the man, I mean, the, 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 the commander. 
um, he was, uh, I mean, he was uh, chosen by the whites, but uh, in fact, he um, he affected yeah, the and, and I think he probably program of the Reds. He, that politically, he was probably closer to the whites than the Reds. Mm -hmm. But by this stage, everybody is sort of had sort of been brought together on the grounds that, well, you know. It's I mean, he he reorganized the uprising. He said, "We have to divide." you know, Poland into districts, we have to uh, attach corpses to the to districts uh, and so on and so on. So he, or, he reorganized the whole, you know, mess, uh, the, the typical <laughs> Polish mess that was, <laughs> that was and, there. And, and, is, and, is, and is it worth mentioning at this stage, this, this character who lived in exile, um, uh, Mirosławski, uh, who saw himself perhaps as but a... But was a misfortune, Mirosławski was a misfortune. But he saw himself, didn't he see himself in a funny sort of way as a sort of Polish Garibaldi, so he arrived in Poland, with under the title, the rather ambiguous title of dictator, but didn't actually didn't actually achieve very much. I think it's fair. To, sorry to ruin somebody's whole career in a few in a few words, but I mean that yeah. was essentially this, another example of this romantic gesture. I mean, he had some success. I mean, he fought in the uh, the Battle of Olszynka Grochowska in the January uprising. He fought in the. I mean, he was the leader of the 1848 uprisings of the Spring of the Nations in uh, in Poznań uh, 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 voivodeship. Uh, he fought in Sicily. He attacked Messina. He attacked uh, uh, Taormina. So. I mean, he had some success. I, but but I, I think, I'm sorry, it I guess wasn't I, his head of office, let's say. I think it's his <laughs> success in terms of uh, the, in this particular uprising in Poland at this particular time. I mean, after having lost two battles, I mean, he just, you know, disappeared. Fled, fled, disappeared uh, from and, and, Poland. And disappeared from Poland, leaving, um, le and, and so the, 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 the battles continued. But of course, at this point, the Tsar, Alexander II, uh, he, he, didn't he remove his brother? As, as viceroy and bring in a, the, bring in, um, the field marshal yeah. Berg, Berg. Who, mm -hmm. who had a reputation for being a, a lot stricter and, and a lot more a lot, lot more willing to sort of kill people with whom he disagreed it's yeah and he was he was he was um, given this mission to crush the uprising by the by January 1864 uh, uh, um, there was a there was an attempt. So there was an attempt on Berg's life um, in, uh, in 1863 uh, uh, in Krakowskie Przedmieście. So right in the center of Warsaw. And the, 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 the punishment, the punishment for that uh, was uh, that uh, the, 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 the Russians entered the building from which the bomb was uh, thrown at, uh, at, at Berg um, and uh, demolished the, the whole building and they threw out the uh, Chopin's piano from that, from that building and uh, Norvit uh, immortalized this uh, event in his, in his poem Fortepian Chopina, Chopin's uh, piano.